Welcome to the course Direct versus Indirect Business Development by Real Estate Assistance Learning. In this course, you will learn that there is a big difference between the two and that your direct efforts will take your business to the next level much faster than your indirect efforts. Also, we'll cover how to overcome some of the objections we've made up for ourselves about direct business development methods, and that having a combination of both methods with slightly more emphasis on the direct ones will hugely impact your business. Before we get started though, let's cover some of the basics. You can pause at any time, there are no time restrictions, and you'll always have access to this video link. And any course components with this course are downloadable in both PDF and Word document format. And we ask that you please do not distribute this content or associated documents without the express permission of Real. So what exactly are direct and indirect business development methods? And what is the difference between the two? So direct business development is talking to people about your business and you because you are your business, period. That's it. Indirect business development methods are things that we use to promote ourselves in sort of an indirect, do the talking for us way. Examples would be our websites and our online profiles. Also, all of those postcards we send out, the brochures, the printed materials, the letters, whatever it is, that can all be summed up as indirect business development. And what's the difference between the two? Well, direct methods build your business and indirect ones don't. And if they do, it takes quite a while. So let's talk about them though, because they are really important. They definitely have their place. And when indirect business development methods are used effectively, they help promote you, your business, your brand, your success, and your overall message. And indirect methods utilize the power of name or brand recognition, as well as the principles behind reticular observation. Don't forget that when you bought the current car that you're driving, what did you start seeing everywhere on the road? Reticular observation is, it's real. And um, indirect methods, they really cap, they capture the power of that. So they do have their place. They also really make you look good. And more than that, they make you feel good. However, indirect methods are typically never cheap. There's really no way of measuring their effectiveness and they're completely subjective. And we'll cover that in just a moment, but you might spend so much money on, let's say you're farming a specific neighborhood and you've got uh, these postcards going out, a newsletter, um, maybe even you, you send an events postcard or whatever it is that uh, is going on and you're farming this area. All those postcards to be printed cost money and the postage costs money. And let's not neglect the time and the energy that you put in designing them, thinking about them. And what we really mean by subjective is that they might arrive to someone's home and just be thrown away because it wasn't attractive to the consumer. And actually, that's probably what's happening. So we're going to cover that in just a little bit. But before we do, let's cover direct methods because they're very different and it really should just be direct method. So I'm going to tell you um, a quick little story of three different agents that I've met in my career that just started talking to people. All three of them specifically started door knocking and their stories, you know, we could write a whole course on door knocking, but the point is they weren't really door knocking. They were just talking to people. And everyone wondered, how are these agents, um, and by the way, they work in three different offices, um, how, how are they doing any business? They don't really have a Facebook business page. I don't ever see them um, combing their database. And what was happening is that each of them just chose a neighborhood they were going to farm, and they started door knocking and getting listings. So why is that? Why did they get listings? Well, the truth is they were just talking to people. That's it. They didn't need a brochure. They didn't need a postcard. They just relied on the confidence within themselves. They asked questions and they got listings. I'm certainly not saying that just doing that is going to go get your business, but I've seen it happen time and time again. So there's no getting around the fact that direct methods just aren't as easy as indirect ones, but here's why they're better. 
First of all, they're expeditious. You know immediately if your efforts were worthwhile or not. Someone's either going to, they're going to agree with you or they're going to connect with you or they're not. This is also completely free. <laughs> it doesn't cost a single thing to talk to people. And it's completely effective because you are your business. So they need to get to know you. So why is talking to people and what we're referring to as this direct method, why, uh, why is it hard for us? Well, because it makes us feel uncomfortable. Um, if we were in a, in a huge room of people and I asked everyone to raise their hand uh, and say, how many of you really like talking about yourself? I don't think anyone would raise their hand. I mean, it's just uncomfortable for us. And when you talk to people, a lot of times there's sort of this barrier we put up in our mind that we're talking about ourselves. In actuality, you're not. You're really just connecting with people. But this is probably one of the biggest barriers as to why we don't just why we don't go door knocking. We don't set up a booth and you know ask people if they need real estate services because it makes us feel uncomfortable. Also, it makes us vulnerable. So we could be rejected, we could be made fun of, we could be yelled at. Uh, I have door knocked and I have been yelled at, I have been made fun of, and I have been rejected. So it's not even um, a probability, it's, it's probably going to happen. But as we know, there can be great power in vulnerability, uh, especially demonstrated by researcher Brene Brown. If you haven't heard of the work of Brene Brown, I highly recommend you, uh, as soon as you're done with this video, YouTube The Power of Vulnerability. Her discussion really leads us to learn that the secret to living a really fulfilled life is being vulnerable. And that could not be more true in your business. Additionally, our brains are actually wired to keep us from doing things that make us uncomfortable, that keep us from being vulnerable. And a wonderful book that really touches on this is by Mel Robbins. It's called The Five Second Rule. And she was one of the first people that really started researching this concept of uh, why can't I just do the things I, I know I need to be doing? In real estate, we know we should be calling our people. We know that we should you know, be talking to, to people just in general about our business, about us. So why aren't we doing it? The book, The Five Second Rule, really helps us understand that it's because our brains train us not to. It makes us uncomfortable. And our brains don't want us to do things that are uncomfortable. Therefore, we don't. So if direct methods are the way to go, what exactly are we talking about here? Well, it's anything that gets you to talk to people. So calling people, whether it was your sphere or your, your database, or I mean, I don't, I don't condone it. It's not my favorite thing, but um, even cold calling. People who are cold calling are getting results because they talk to people. I mean, it's not rocket science here. Door knocking. <laughs> I've seen it uh, three times. Three different individuals I was just talking about um, have started their careers, relaunched their careers, boosted their careers by door knocking. Why did that work? Because they talked to people. Networking. Uh, we do have a great course offered by Real that's called Networking Redefined. And we really talk about the types of networking that you should be doing that will raise your average purchase price, get you in touch with the right kind of people that you want to work with. But the point is that all happens because you're talking. And also just talking to people in general, at the store, at a coffee shop, at a restaurant. These are what we're talking about, this whole idea of direct business development. So if we really are promoting the idea that to build your business, you should be talking to people. What are ways to get in touch with them that don't come across as cheesy or, you know, sort of ridiculous or even uncomfortable? Well, the first way to answer that is to determine who are we talking about? Are these people that you know or people that you don't know? Because the topics are going to be different. I know that I personally have a much easier time talking to people I know. And that within itself is a huge reason why door knocking and cold calling was never my thing. Now, some people have a personality type and, and tendencies that allow them to just, they could talk to anybody and it doesn't even matter. They don't have a problem with it. They could pick up the phone and cold call all day. As soon as they've gotten over the objection that they shouldn't be doing it or it's uncomfortable for them, it all changes. 
I know that for me, though, I like to talk to people that I know. So if I'm calling people I know or door knocking people's homes that I know, what am I going to talk about? One of my favorite things to do that I've started doing lately is to invite them to events or parties. It's such a non-threatening reason to reach out. So, you know, I'll think about my database. And if I know that there's a free local concert coming up, and I think that some of the people in my database might really like it, I'll pick up the phone. And it's such a non-threatening reason to get in touch with them. Hey, you guys, did you know that there's this concert coming up, you know? Um, Sometimes you're going to have clients in your database that you haven't talked to in a while. And so you're going to have to get over the objection, uh, well, they haven't heard from you in a while. You know what? Just say that to them. Say, hey, I know you haven't heard from me in a while, but there's this concert coming up that made me think of you. This is all about getting in touch with people. It's not even about the concert. It's the fact that you called them. You got a hold of them. Utilizing social media to connect over topics that you've recently seen on Facebook or Instagram or any of their social media sites is a huge way to get in touch with people. The other day, I saw somebody on Facebook who was in Hawaii, and it just so happens they were staying at a resort that I had stayed at. It's one of my favorite places in Hawaii. So I called her and I said, oh my word, I saw that you were at that resort. What did you think? And we talked for 20 minutes about it. The truth is, I hadn't talked to her in probably four or five months, and but now I'm in touch. So um, super non-threatening ways on social media to get in touch with our people. I mean, there are a hundred topics to talk about. Another really non-threatening way is to call someone on their birthday, on their anniversary, or if it's a past client, call them on their house anniversary. I sold it to you six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. It doesn't matter. It's just a, it's a non-threatening reason to talk to your people. For people that you don't know, maybe you are door knocking, maybe you are cold calling, or maybe you're just, um, uh, I don't know, at a coffee shop meeting random strangers. You know, what kind of things can you connect with with them? <clears throat> so anything that involves their home, uh, you know, where do you live? Oh, what are you looking to do? Are you looking to remodel? What have you done lately? Um, oh, I've got this great designer. You, I've got this landscape person. There are so many ways to connect over the house. Um, one of the agents in my office recently did a little um, project and they walked through a neighborhood and they noticed everyone on the street who needed some type of roof repair missing shingles, the gutters are hanging down, the flashing's messed up, you know, there was a lot of things to look for. And they paired with a local roofer, and they created a, a some sort of postcard that said, call this roofer and mention my name, and you'll get 25% off, whatever the discount was. But to make it more effective, we brainstormed, and that agent actually went and handed those postcards to those homes and the thing is, is that it's not even about real estate in that sense. It's that she connected. There was a connection. And furthermore, she was the connection to the roofer, which was something that they needed. When you think in terms like that, there are so many ways that you can get in touch with people that you don't know. Also, always talking about the market, statistics, analytics. You could, you could give them a complimentary comparative market analysis, a home valuation, anything that has to do with the market is always a great way to connect. And why not invite community members to community events? It might seem kind of silly, but you could create some sort of postcard or marketing material and walk the neighborhoods, be at a coffee shop handing it out, and maybe it says, um, you're invited to this community concert. Um, there's just so many ways to get in touch with people. So when you combine your efforts, you'll actually see the best results. So for example, after somebody has met you and there was a definite connection, you liked them and they liked you, they were interested in what you had to say, they are going to go visit your website or your online profile. It is so highly likely. So make sure this would be something that I would consider is an indirect business development method. Make sure your website looks good. Make sure that your profile looks good. Your profile on your company website, on your personal website, on Zillow, on Yelp, on Google. Make sure that that is all filled out. The only difference is that switch your thinking. Don't think that your website is going to bring you money. It's really just an extension of you. 
Also, there's no doubt that farming, both in the traditional sense that we've all been taught in real estate, as well as utilizing technology, can be really successful. It's just that it costs a lot of time and money. Those are both things that I know I don't like to give up. So instead of spending $5,000 a month sending postcards out to one specific neighborhood, that's a true figure. I've got an agent in my office that's done it for years, and it does work. I mean, after years and years and years, um, they have business coming in because there's that name recognition. They see that they have sold these homes, and so they are clearly the go-to expert to call in that neighborhood. But that's $60,000 a year. And instead, um, again, based from personal experience, there are direct methods that could have been implored to have saved that money. Go talk to these people. Go offer them suggestions. Um, you know, hand them something. There might still be a printing cost, but you're certainly not going to spend anywhere near the amount that you were spending. And make sure you're getting the biggest bang for your buck no matter what you're doing. So don't forget, if you, if you really do want to utilize a lot of these indirect methods, the postcards, the flyers, the um, unsolicited comparative market analyses, whatever it is, ask yourself what works on you. The thing is, is that we are the consumer. So it's all right to ask what grabs your attention. Keeping that in mind is going to really help your indirect business development methods go as far as they can. Um, having a postcard that is attractive and has real pertinent information on it is way better than just a picture of a house, in my opinion. I want to tell you a real story that happened to me a few years ago at sort of the beginning of my career. I was walking, um, actually I wasn't even, I, my intent was not to be door knocking or to be um, building my business in any way really. I was just at a coffee shop and there was this woman and she was walking her dog out on a walk and um, it was obvious because of the neighborhood that we were in that she probably lived right there. There were a lot of high rise condos. And so I asked, you know, we connected over something. And so I said, oh, do you live in the area? And she said, oh, yes, my husband and I, we just bought this condo a couple of months ago. And I said, oh, which one? And she named it. And I knew that that was a really high priced condominium um, project. And I mean, probably at least in the mid millions, 1.5 or so. And I said, oh, my word, you probably love it. And she just kind of stared at me and she said, you know what? we don't. We actually hate it. And I was just perplexed. And I said, you hate it? I, I mean, isn't it the one that has the beautiful view? And she said, oh, yeah, but look at this guy. And she pointed to her dog. And she said, Are, we never even considered that we would have to take him down 20 floors every time he needs to use the restroom. And it was just so bizarre to me to, to think that they hadn't considered this. But you don't know what you don't know. Somehow this had never been discussed, and I don't know, their agent hadn't pointed it out to them. Long story short, I listed that woman's condo because they they couldn't stand it. They thought the condo lifestyle was going to be for them, and I'm the only one that asked, do you like it? And when she said no, I said, well, we should probably get you something else. It it Just talking to people will lead to the fastest, most effective results you will see. So here are some frequently asked questions that we get when it comes to direct versus indirect business development. Um, I'm actually going to answer the second one first. Where did this topic even come from? Isn't it pretty basic? You know, as real estate agents, we all know that you need to talk to people, that talking to people is not only what we're good at, because it's why we got in the industry, uh, we thought we'd be good at it, but that it, it does produce results. So why do we forget? The only, you know, the biggest reason that um, this course even came to be was that I just constantly was having agents asking me, should I do this? Should I pay for this? Should I try this postcard? I want this newsletter. And I just thought, y'all, this is not what's going to build your business. It's a part of it. You know, have a newsletter, be in touch with your people, um, have branding that looks good and feels good to you but you cannot rely on it to build your business. So really advocating and reminding everybody of the simple fact that you have to talk to people to build your business is where and why this course even came about. What about paid subscriptions? I've offered them, uh, offered them. I've talked about them. 
What about paid subscriptions to services like Zillow or other lead capture offerings? You know, you can spend thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on Zillow a month to have leads directed to you. You know, I'm never going to say how one should run their business. And if it's successful for you, I really have, you know, where my opinion just doesn't matter. However, I know that about myself, I don't like to spend time or money that I don't need to. So if there's a way to not spend tens of thousands of dollars a month to have free leads, I'd rather do that because that money is going to go back in my pocket. So um, what do I think about them? What do we think about them? I think that they have their place and everyone works a little differently. I just know that personally, I would never subscribe to something like that, knowing that I could simply talk to people and achieve the same results. So how often should you be reaching out in direct ways? You know, there is a system. I think that it, whatever is comfortable for you um, and to who and when, well, I, you know, cultivate your database. Your database is like your liquid gold. The more that you're in touch with them, offering pertinent information and reminding them of how much you enjoyed working with them and that they're a vital part of your business, they will refer you all day long. And when it does come time for them to sell, they're going to pick up the phone and call you. So, you know, I think that you should be in touch with your sphere at least every couple of months. Um, and especially for clients that you've really connected with, even, you know, once a month is fine. Business development in the direct manner should be done every single day. If you're not growing your business, you're not going to have a paycheck in six months. Are there any indirect methods that are better than others? You know, perhaps I do. I love newsletters. Um, it's an extension of you. A lot of companies offer, you know, their generic newsletter. That's great. If you're sending out anything just to sort of be touching your clients, that's great. It's better than nothing. But when you can make it personalized and um, of you, it's an extension of what you think and what you see. That is key. And people love that and they'll share it. And they'll say, you know, who wrote this? And being really as specific as you can, if you're targeting one community, let's say we're talking about geographical farming and indirect methods in that regard, being as specific to that neighborhood and offering tips and um, sort of the inside scoop on what's happening is going to make you stand out like the true professional of that neighborhood faster than, than anything. Definitely much faster than saying, these are the homes that sold. <laughs> They, you know, that's great, but what else? So uh, newsletters are probably one of the best ones, in my opinion. But also, everyone uses and utilizes social media. There's no question about it. So paying for um, some of those indirect methods there to let um, the ads and the posts do the talking for you, I think can be really beneficial. I know that I've personally done those efforts and I saw great results. So coming up with a really catchy ad or um, a post and then boosting it on Facebook, um, it is indirect because you're not directly talking to people, but it does advocate your message. And as long as that message is catchy and it's good, and again, you're the consumer, so if it was uh, good to you, you know, I think that you will yield results there faster than if you just send out 500 just sold postcards. Don't forget, you're always welcome to let us know what questions you have by writing to us at contact at bearealagent.com. And some other helpful products that are very much in conjunction with this course are the power of client appreciation parties, the power of client appreciation gifts, and be a real standout agent, where we really del delve into what you can do to stand out and rise above the rest. With that, we just would love to thank you and let you know that you, we always welcome your feedback. We'd love to hear how our products are helping you. So please write to us and share your success stories at success at beareagent.com. Thanks.